Hello and welcome to ATI 4448. In this session we are going to uh, continue with the project life cycle. The first uh, process was uh, the initiation. The second process is the planning process. So in this uh, process uh, actually we recruit the team and we gather requirements and then do the work breakdown structure. Uh, we were talk uh, more in details about the uh, three uh, those three uh, items that we need to do within the planning but also there are other things that are asso associated with the planning so the planning um, will continue in chapter 4 where we start talking about the um, schedule and how to estimate the time uh, then in chapter 5 uh, we talk about the cost and also that's in the planning section uh, then uh, we are going to address the uh, how to create network diagram uh, how to uh, uh, identify the risk and so on so the planning actually the planning process is going to take uh, around three four chapters uh, then we uh, are going to address the uh, execution part the monitoring and control and closing the project uh, so for this one uh, let's start uh, with the planning and see how, how can we uh, start the, the planning for a project in this chapter we'll identify the team members develop communication plan uh, define and record project requirements and then create the work breakdown structure. Before we move on, let's understand what's the planning as a concept or terminology. The planning is to develop a project plan that meets the condition of satisfaction uh, as negotiated between the uh, uh, provider and the uh, uh, customer uh, and uh, as described in the project overview statement. So it should be documented uh, as a contract between uh, the uh, organization and their customer or their client uh, that uh, requested the project. Uh, there are lots of um, factors uh, that uh, that's important uh, in the planning or uh, why do I need do, to do planning? but I will concentrate on three of them which is reducing uncertainty, increasing understanding and improving the efficiency not to mention you know the quality, the cost, um, the utilization of resources and other uh, important uh, things that that's related to the planning uh, but uh, like I said you know just um, I'm listing some of them and not mentioning all of them so you can um, actually uh, read more about the importance of planning and how um, it organizes, uh, organizes the uh, project execution. In the planning process, uh, like I said before, we negotiate the conditions of satisfaction uh, and then we write a project overview statement to document the uh, conditions, the uh, assumptions and the uh, uh, requirements that uh, needed for uh, the project. In addition, uh, we start developing the work breakdown structure. The work breakdown structure is the uh, activities, the group of activities needed to accomplish the uh, goal or uh, the project objectives. Um, then we estimate activity durations and resources, um, develop project network diagram, uh, determine the critical path uh, for these activities, revise and approve project completion date and finalize resource uh, schedule. Uh, based on the information that we documented uh, in the project overview statement which states the uh, conditions and states uh, the activities that we are going to do to achieve this, this project and we have uh, all the information needed uh, the resources, the skills, uh, and the approach for solving the problem uh, for the customer. We explain the plan for the customer and we gain the uh, consensus on 
the project. Uh, the customer might be outsider or might be uh, the management in the organization. So whether uh, we need to uh, uh, propose for the management or propose for the customer, or maybe both, we have to uh, gain the consensus on uh, the uh, approach that we are going to follow to achieve the uh, main goal or the project objectives. Let's start with recruiting the project team. When we say project team, uh, we mean the main components of uh, the team, which is three components. Uh, we have project manager, we have core team, and contracted team. To select the project manager, we need to have certain criteria uh, that uh, eliminates uh, you know, the, the uh, outsider or the certain, uh, 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 let's say, certain uh, characteristics and provide the needed characteristics for a successful uh, project. Usually, we look at the background and experience of the project manager and their uh, ability to lead the team uh, and uh, provide strategic experience for the team. In addition to their technical experience in uh, the area of the project. Uh, also, uh, they need to have interpersonal uh, competence and then, uh, of course, the managerial ability uh, that they need to have to run uh, the uh, schedule, uh, the money, the cost, and uh, the project uh, uh, overall uh, reporting, uh, monitoring, uh, and controlling system. For the core team, also we need certain criteria to select the uh, team members. Uh, we need commitment, we need uh, shared responsibility, uh, the uh, member need to share responsibility with other team members. Uh, the, the flexibility of uh, the team member to adapt with uh, the project uh, uh, changes or the uh, uh, project uh, needs or requirements. Um, they need to be task oriented and they need to uh, be able to work within schedules and constraints. Then their willingness uh, for trust and mutual support. Not only task oriented, but they should be also team oriented because they're gonna work together on um, finishing the product or the service needed for the project. They need to be open-minded and they need to have the ability to work across structure and authorities and the ability to use project management tools. The project team responsibilities is to select appropriate processes required to meet the project objectives and then to use a defined approach that can be adopted to meet requirements. And then to comply with requirements to meet stakeholders' needs and expectations and of course to balance the competing demand of the triangle that uh, we uh, studied at the uh, first chapter uh, which is the scope, time, cost, quality and resources in addition to the risk uh, produced uh, uh, by or uh, associated with the product or the service. So we need to balance that triangle to make sure that um, all factors are in balance. If I don't have the needed skills within the organization or I have shortage, then I need to um, contract a team. And uh, uh, to contract a team, I need to brief them with the problem and their role. I need to uh, identify the priorities, if they are working on uh, more than one project or many projects, I need to identify or define my pro uh, priority for my project 
so they will not leave me or um, uh, give me a short time or give attention uh, for a short time to my project versus the other projects that they are working on and um, the quality uh, must be uh, uh, based on the project criteria or certain criteria uh, that the project manager should provide for the contracted team and should not accept the uh, project or the outcome if it was not uh, complying with uh, the conditions or the constraints of quality that's been provide, provided by the uh, team uh, or the project manager. Um, the problem with those uh, contracted teams that most of the time they require um, supervision from um, the uh, organization team. So we need one, either the project manager or one of the team members to uh, supervise their product because um, you don't need to repeat the work that um, has been done uh, all over again if they did not succeed in uh, submitting the proper work or the quality work that was required from them. How can we identify the contracting uh, team? Uh, we have certain process to do that. And the steps in the process is to identify the needed skills, number of resources, and uh, time frame. What kind of skills do I need to accomplish the project or am I, uh, I'm missing uh, from my organization? Uh, I have shortage. And uh, how many people do I need and uh, within uh, what period of time? Then we list the companies that are specialized in this area and we invite them for uh, the proposal. Then we write a request for proposal uh, for each company or for the selected companies and we would like each one of them to submit a proposal on the method or the uh, solution that they would like to follow to assist us in solving the problem with the skills that they have. Then we establish a selection criteria for selecting the vendors. If three, four, five companies submitted their proposals, we need to have certain criteria to select from the five uh, the uh, uh, appropriate contractor or the skillful contractor that will work with me uh, on that project. Now remember that when I select uh, the uh, contracted team or company, one of the things that we look at is their history, their reputation in uh, uh, finishing projects, in commitment, in quality, and based on that, uh, those might be the criteria, one of the uh, uh, criterion that we need to uh, document or use to select those vendors. We distribute the request for a proposal, evaluate responses, and reduce list to few who make formal uh, presentation. So if I have three of them that was successful to submit request for proposal and uh, are good companies, three of them, then I need them to make uh, for me a presentation, uh, on-site presentation. Uh, so their teams will come and uh, start uh, presenting for me how they can solve the problem and um, uh, what are the, their uh, uh, experience in this area and uh, uh, their reputation or their history, the quality in addition to uh, the investigation from the company itself on uh, their history. And then we choose a final vendor to uh, uh, prepare the contract with them and then execute the uh, contract or the uh, start of uh, that work. Sometimes um, might not be a request for proposal. It might be just request for uh, information. Or if I need equipment or material, then it will be request for a quote for the um, equipment, uh, material, or labor installation of th those equipment uh, within uh, the project or. Uh, 
in a certain area uh, that's related to the project. So the types of proposal are requests for information, which is just uh, looking for information, request for a proposal, which is looking for a solution for a problem and the price to solve such a problem, and the request for code when I'm searching for um, material and maybe labor associated with material or uh, the uh, equipment and the installation of the equipment. For the contracts, we have uh, four types of contracts. Uh, we have the uh, retainer contract, which is pay the contractor a fixed fee uh, per period. Uh, so we don't have an end date uh, that's specified for this project and can be terminated when service is no longer needed. And usually this, this works, this type of contract works when um, I don't have an uh, end date for the project. I just need to finish uh, doing something, fixing something. Uh, for example, uh, if it, you know, for the oil spill in the Gulf, uh, that's this is a good example for um, you know a contract that I don't know when it's gonna finish. All what I need is to stop the leak from uh, the uh, the oil. So if it finishes in six months, that's that's it. If it finishes in nine months, that's it. But I need to stop the leak. Um, so that contract is concerned as a, a retainer uh, contract. And then we have time and materials. Uh, detailed specification is not available, but um, you know uh, we uh, seek the information about those uh, material or the the time for that and the material needed for the uh, project. And there is time and materials not to exceed, which is enough. Um, that's known for the contractor to meet customer needs at a cost not to exceed a certain uh, amount of money. And then we have the fixed bid, um, uh, which we have uh, detailed specifications for the uh, project. And the contractor is willing to provide deliverables, and meet deadlines, uh, date, and within certain budget. So we have fixed price or fixed bid on a certain project. Uh, give that to the contractor, they're going to finish in a certain uh, time within a uh, certain budget and uh, provide certain deliverables. For the contract management, we have contract administration um, that has written guidelines for managing the contract and then we have contract cancellation that clear guidelines on the conditions of cancelling the uh, contract and then we have contract closing. Uh, we have certain closing uh, criteria uh, for uh, the project, uh, such as you know acceptance for the uh, uh, conditions or acceptance uh, acceptance for the outcome uh, product or service or deliverables for that project. And uh, if needed, uh, debriefing sessions for uh, the customer to uh, explain for them the uh, results from uh, the analysis or the uh, uh, project overall uh, execution. To work in teams, we have to establish team operating rules. The main rules uh, that we need to uh, establish is uh, the situation uh, requiring team operating rules, which is uh, problem solving. How are we going to solve the problem? The uh, uh, meeting needed to discuss that. Um, and then decision making, um, how are we going to take the decision or who's going to make the decision? Um, uh, and then uh, the conflict resolution, if there was a conflict, how we can solve that uh, without uh, you know, uh, affecting the customer or the outcome, the consensus uh, building, uh, the brainstorming sessions uh, to solve a problem, and the team meetings. 
So all these uh, are called operating rules. In the conflict resolution, we have uh, three types of people that we need to deal with. Uh, avoidant, uh, competitive, or collaborative. And you know, most likely the person that's collaborative is the one to work with because those people, those type of people, uh, they look for win-win solution uh, and will not avoid conflict but will try approach the conflict in a reasonable manner. While you know, for the avoidant uh, person uh, tends to avoid uh, direct confirm, uh, confer confrontation, uh, which is uh, not good because you know if you have a problem, then you have to confront the uh, problem and try to solve it uh, instead of avoiding it. And of course, the uh, competitive uh, uh, is the person tends to seek out conflict which will increase the stress and tension with the team. So we would like to have a, a, co a collaborative uh, team member. In the consensus building, um, reaching agreement through discussion, uh, and that will be through the uh, meetings, or maybe you know through uh, phone calls or phone conferences, uh, conference calls, uh, or other means, but um, uh, any discussion uh, the team has to reach to an agreement on what uh, decision to uh, go with. And everyone on the team has a, a chance to speak, uh, and all team members must agree on a course of action. Uh, for the brainstorming, um, it's a technique to focus creativity of the team. Uh, so we will have some kind of sessions for brainstorming to uh, try to solve a problem or assist in uh, project execution. The, for team meetings, the rules that need to be uh, set uh, for that is the uh, procedure matter or uh, uh, the uh, way that those meetings should be executed. How many times the agenda preparation uh, the uh, meeting uh, coordinator, uh, who's going to be the coordinator for that meeting, and the uh, recording and distribution of meeting minutes, whether uh, via uh, email <coughs> or uh, document sharing uh, server, uh, certain uh, area, uh, shared drive, uh, whatever, but the meeting minutes has to be distributed and shared and recorded for uh, uh, sharing and uh, for knowing each uh, um, member what needs to be done uh, based on the uh, meeting. Uh, for the types of meetings, we have daily status uh, meeting, which can be short uh, just to give the daily update. Uh, problem resolution meeting, if I have a certain problem, then I need to call the team to start looking into the problem what will be the resolution, what will be the method uh, or the approach that need to be followed to solve such a problem. If I need external help, then I need to identify the external help needed, the skills needed, and then uh, if it's a big problem that needs a contractor, then I will uh, identify a contractor with the processes or with the procedure mentioned before uh, for a contractor. And then also uh, there is a project review uh, where uh, usually it happens as a brief for the manager uh, just to update the manager on uh, where everybody is. For the uh, communications planning between the team member and between the uh, uh, project manager and the customer and the stakeholders, uh, we have uh, timing, uh, uh, maybe too soon and um, uh, the information uh, will be forgotten so it's not good to have uh, me, uh, uh, communication with a customer too soon uh, or too late and the information will not be useful for the situation because it's already passed or too late. Uh, the content, we need to determine what kind of information the team members need to be successful and um, we need to identify the channels. Is it better to uh, be face-to-face -face 
or uh, video conferencing or uh, phone uh, uh, call conference um, we need to see if uh, maybe the email can be considered as a mass email that can be sent to everybody um, the tone in the email is very important and of course the quality of the writing of the email it, it's very important then we have uh, written materials documents that can be submitted like reports or uh, other written materials and then uh, phone call just um, person to person or uh, the project manager with uh, one of the team members so those are the type of uh, communications planning that we need to look at also we need to look at uh, how communicate how to communicate with the sponsor um, before we do that we need to identify what kind of information needed uh, to be communicated and then uh, communicate on a regular basis uh, the upward communication professional challenges with the uh, management uh, should be communicated to uh, make sure that uh, they provide for uh, the team the means to move forward without any problems and uh, also they need to address their concerns and feedback uh, downwards communication um, the team uh, would like to have recognition if they do a good job and uh, also they need to know what to ex what's been expected from them and uh, feedback too. Uh, communication with other stakeholders uh, also we need to verify the needed information for the stakeholder because each stakeholder is requesting different information than the other so it depends on uh, what uh, who uh, who's the stakeholder that I'm talking about um, so we need to uh, verify the information and communicate on a regular basis after we uh, identified the team and we created a communication plan between the uh, team members and the customer and the stakeholders now we need to gather requirements requirements are things that we should discover before starting to fully design build or execute a project uh, the types of requirements that will be associated with the project are either functional requirements or non-functional requirements or global requirements. The functional requirements define what a system is supposed to accomplish. The non-functional requirements uh, requirements that specify criteria that can be used to judge the operations or the operation of a system. For the global requirements, it's more of a global level. What kind of requirements is needed to communicate with the world, the whole uh, uh, organizations, or the uh, other companies uh, across the uh, ocean or across the world from us? Um, what kind of requirements are needed to uh, get the material, send the material, or uh, uh, communicate? with uh, those uh, people, maybe suppliers, maybe providers, maybe um, even customers. And then the product uh, project constraints. To understand the requirements, we can create what's called requirements breakdown structure. Based on the project goal and uh, the solution, the proposed solution, we can actually identify the different requirements. And for each requirement, we have the different functions and sub-functions and the, the features needed for such a requirement. The methods for requirement gathering either through facilitated group sessions and this uh, method is excellent for cross-functional processes uh, detailed requirements can be documented and verified immediately and resolves issues with an impartial facilitator but there are some risks associated with that 
which is the use of untrained facilitator can lead that can lead to a negative response from users and also the time and cost of planning executing session can be high we can use also prototypes um, and that's innovative uh, ideas that can be generated uh, users uh, clarify what they want uh, users also can identify requirements that may be missed um, customer focused um, it's an early proof of concept for the product or the service and stimulates uh, thought uh, process now the problem with that or the risk associated with that the customer may want to implement prototype which is difficult to know uh, when to stop um, or uh, if the prototype is working properly or not it needs also specialized skills uh, for uh, to achieve that method and uh, it doesn't have documentation since they have prototype usually they don't have any documentation for that the third method interviews uh, in this uh, method the customer actually will be participating or the end user will be participating in uh, those interviews and there is a high level uh, description of functions and processes uh, that's provided by the end user the problem with that descriptions may differ from actual detailed activities and without structure stakeholders may not know what information to provide so the size of information will be a lot or huge and we need to filter the information needed and it might not be correct since we have lots of information that's being gathered and not specific to what we need and then real needs ignored if analyst is uh, Bridges. The fourth method is the ob uh, observation, uh, where we can just observe uh, the current situation. It's a specific uh, and complete descriptions of the actions provided. Uh, it's effective when routine activities are difficult to describe. Uh, Sometimes when you go to a manufacturing company or uh, assembling company, the employee cannot uh, describe uh, the procedure that they do for you. So it's good to observe what they do to learn the current situation and the problem that they have. The risk from using this method is uh, uh, the time consumption that uh, will be associated with the observation um, you need to have people uh, around uh, the time at the same time of the employees watching them observing them maybe documenting uh, that either uh, with digital documentation or videotaping uh, it's confusing and conflicting uh, uh, information that must be clarified and then there is a misinterpretation of what's observed, uh, observed if um, the person that's observing uh, doesn't know the process uh, or doesn't have experience in that process the uh, fifth method is requirements reuse in this case the requirements are already uh, existing or exist but we can reuse it uh, based on uh, the new project uh, something uh, you know the same project or a similar project that's been done before we know the requirements then we can reuse the requirements the uh, Requirements usually are quickly generated and refined. Uh, the redundant effort uh, will be reduced at that point. 
and uh, customer satisfaction enhanced by previous uh, proof because already uh, there is a proof of concept that's been done before and also uh, since we uh, did that before then the quality increases because we know what went wrong or uh, how we can improve the process or uh, the user requirements to achieve better outcome and reinventing the wheel will be minimized the risk from that uh, that we, we will have significant investment to develop archives uh, uh, maintenance and library functions uh, it may violate uh, intellectual rights of uh, previous owner because maybe the previous owner would wouldn't like you to use the documentation or the requirements that's been used in their project and the similarity may be misunderstood you may think that it's the same project but it might not be the same uh, project the sixth method is the business process analysis uh, which is excellent for cross-functional processes uh, it has visual communication uh, and it has verification of what is and what's not. The risk of using that implementation of improvement is dependent on a, uh, an organization open to changes, uh, good facilitation, uh, data gathering and uh, interpretation required, and time uh, it's time consuming. For the last one is the use case scenario which states of system described uh, before entering the system uh, completed scenarios used to describe state of system uh, normal uh, flow of events ex uh, exceptions uh, revealed uh, improved customer satisfaction and design the risk of doing that uh, newness has uh, resulted in some uh, inconsistencies information may still be missing from scenario uh, description long interaction required and training uh, is expensive the requirements attributes we have the uh, completeness uh, clarity uh, validity measurability testability maintainability reliability look and feel of the requirement the feasibility of that requirement uh, precedent the scale scalability stability performance safety and specifications <coughs> after we're done with requirements uh, requ uh, uh, identifying the requirements now we need to identify the activities that's needed to achieve the uh, project goal or uh, the uh, project objectives so we need to create what's called work breakdown structure the work breakdown structure is a hierarchical description of the work that must be done to complete the project as defined in the project overview statement the inputs for that is the project overview statement and the requirements document that we just created before the uh, terms that we use within the work breakdown structure are the activity we, you will hear the word activity or task a lot uh, and you will hear the word work package the activity is the chunk of work the tasks is a smaller chunk of work so we can consider that activities are made up of tasks but uh, you know the problem that you know lots of um, uh, people in companies they will say that you know the activity and the task are the same <coughs> so they say task and subtask which is you know task for the chunk of work and subtask for the smaller chunk of work the work package is the complete description of how the task that make up the activity will actually be done and remember that this is very important because there is a difference between the work package and the task so the work package is the complete description of how the task 
will be uh, actually done. <coughs> the uses for the word breakdown structure is uh, uh, it's a thought process tool, uh, architectural design tool, it's a planning tool, and it will actually show me the status uh, for reporting purposes. How to generate the work breakdown structure? To generate that, we need um, a certain approach. Uh, we can follow either a top-down approach or a um, bottom-up approach. For the top-down approach, it starts with the goal and continue to uh, partition work until it has been sufficiently defined. <coughs> For the bottom-up approach, the first level tasks are identified, then groups are formed around the first level, so we can categorize or group the tasks within a main task, and then uh, those group of uh, tasks can be under activity, and the group of activities under a process. So we can go from bottom up uh, in the <coughs> work breakdown structure. <coughs> the work breakdown structure <coughs> excuse me um, for small projects <coughs> is considered mind mapping. <coughs> for large projects we have intermediate work breakdown structure. <coughs> for adaptive and extreme projects, it's iterative or iterative work breakdown structure. <coughs> How do we check if the work breakdown structure that I created is complete or not? The, first of all, the status or completion is measurable. Uh, we will see if I did uh, document all the activities and if each activity has a deliver deliverable then uh, the time and cost that's, uh, that are estimated for each activity <coughs> and the activity duration is within acceptable limits so we should look at the different activities activity duration and see uh, if it does make sense or not and the work assignments are independent. <coughs> Sometimes there is a seventh criteria that's uh, been used by project managers for judgment um, and it's th their own judgment that the work that the work breakdown structure is not complete or complete. So that's a uh, project manager's uh, judgment or point of view. <coughs> Exceptions to the completion uh, criteria rule, stopping before completion uh, uh, criteria are met, and decomposing beyond completion of the criteria. <coughs> the different approaches to build the work breakdown structure, we have uh, like noun type, we have verb type, and we have organizational. <coughs> For the noun type, in terms of the uh, comp components of the deliverables, uh, physical uh, decomposition or functional for the verb type in terms of the actions that must be uh, done to produce the deliverables and this is the most used you know usually you say design, build, test, implement, uh, provide, define, identify uh, so uh, th this is the most common one the verb type <coughs> and the organizational type <coughs> Uh, has the geographic uh, departmental business process. This is an example of a uh, work breakdown structure and this is called tree structure. Uh, this is construction of a house and uh, <coughs> as you can see we have the different activities or processes or tasks, main tasks and the subtask and the work packages for each uh, 
subtasks. So those are the activities needed to construct a house. And this is called a work breakdown structure where it breaks down the activities and show how, what, what's need, what needed to be done to finish the construction of a house. But in this one, maybe it doesn't show uh, the sequence of events which one comes first. <coughs> So we can do it in an outline, uh, indented outline uh, approach. And then this one, actually, it will give you the sequence, which one should come first, and if uh, you can actually start an activity uh, before, after, or overlap with other activities. And we have the waterfall, uh, waterfall structure. And this is a different, a different or another representation of the work breakdown structure. I will stop here for part one and we'll continue uh, part two uh, for uh, creating a work breakdown structure but in a practical way using <coughs> Microsoft Visio and using Microsoft Project. That would be all for this session. If you have any questions, please email it to me. Thank you.